Welcome to the Cabral Concept. I'm Stephen Cabral, board certified naturopathic doctor, and it's Total Wellness Tuesday, which means I wanna to talk to you about your wellness, your health, and how you can improve it no matter what level you're at. So today's uh, topic is actually about a test that very few people know about. Unless you're wor working with a naturopathic doctor or integrative uh, medical doctor or functional medicine therapist or whoever uh, might be that you're working with that um, does know kind of an expansive uh, base on natural health, um, they may or may not know about this test, but it tests for inflammation. And it does so specifically through a very simple method called omega-3 testing. Now, if you're not familiar with this test, um, I highly recommend you have it done yourself or at least look into it if you're over the age of 40 or you currently have high cholesterol or high homocysteine or high CRP or any of the issues that could potentially lead to cardiovascular disease. Now let me tell you a little bit about this test and why I believe it's important for you. And it's because it looks at, not just from a cardiovascular perspective, but from an overall inflammation-based perspective. Which means if you're suffering from some type of skin issue right now, psoriasis, eczema, whatever it might be, an immune system imbalance like uh, rheumatoid arthritis or an autoimmune-based disease, Hashimoto's, any um, imbalance in the immune system or inflammation-based, um, I would highly recommend looking into this because it looks at those underlying root causes. Maybe your omega-6 levels are too high as opposed to your omega-3 levels. And we're gonna look at that right now. So, uh, very aptly named omega-3 test. And I know that you can't see this that well, so what I'm gonna do is kinda just zoom in quick. And what it does is it gives you an omega-3 score. So, essentially, it's looking for you to have a ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s of about 5 to 1. Now, there's a lot of people out there who believe that your omega levels should actually be more like 2 or 3 to 1 from omega-6s to omega-3s. Think of it this way. Omega-6 fats aren't bad. They're bad when they're eaten in excess and if there's an imbalance to omega-3s. Because we actually do need more omega-6s than omega-3s, but they're so easy to get in our diet and they're just pervasive um, in our nutrition in general. So we don't need to try to get more omega-6s. Um, the other issue is this. Unless you're trying to get omega-3s in your diet, it can be somewhat confusing and somewhat complicated to know if you are getting enough or if you're getting the right sources. Like if you're eating farm-raised fish, most people don't know there's less than 50% of the omega-3s in farm-raised fish as there is in regular um, wild fish. So what we're looking at is the omega-6 ratio to the omega-3s. Ideally, five to one um, or, like I said, a little bit um, less than that ideally. So what I'm gonna have you look at is the next line as well, which is, arachidonic acid to EPA. Now, arachidonic acid, we can just think of it this way. You can look at it as it's the most inflammatory of the omega-6s. So, most notorious because it's in red meat and other items like that, but it doesn't mean that you have to kind of victimize red meat or anything like that. It means that you have to look at your own personal levels. If you don't have an issue with it, it may not be as big a deal. If you do, it could be a larger issue to look at. And then EPA is just the bottom of that omega-3 chain reaction, which means a lot of time, if you have less total omega-3s, it's not gonna make its way all the way down to EPA. Some sometimes get stuck even higher up, ALA kind of starts the chain, or might get stuck right above that at DHA, and you simply don't have enough extra output. So now, as the test goes down, and this is very, very simple to read and very, very simple to complete, I'm gonna show you that next level. As you look at the next page, now the next page is what I think, I, the reason I love this test, there are so many to choose from, this in my opinion is the best test because of its, it's the least expensive and it um, gives you the best graphs and information. If you look here, it says USA is up at the top, then Quebec, then some of the Mediterranean um, uh, continents or <laughs> Mediterranean countries, and then we have some of the islands down below, which typically have the least amount of inflammatory omega-6s and most omega-3s, simply because they eat the most um, fish, and they also have the least amount of processed food in their diet. Okay, so as I always tell all of my um, wellness clients when they do come in, you never wanna hang around up here with your fellow Americans, um, that's always a bad thing when it comes to health. We spend the most money in the entire world, but we are poorer than 37th in the industrial world in terms of health, which means we simply can't buy our way out of poor health. Okay, 
So um, this person right here, they're more near the French Canadians. I think their level was around a seven, uh, let's see, it was a 7.7 .7 .7 instead of 5.1, and that's typical. I see somewhere around seven to 10. Um, and, but then their arachidonic acid to EPA level was a 16.5, and that's still supposed to be five to one. So now I'm gonna show you why that discrepancy comes about. Okay, so now this is the best part, in my opinion, of the entire test, and, I, and this is what I love the most about it. There's red, which typically means bad, and there's green, which typically means good. So yellow is kind of just like the cautionary zone. This person's pretty much right in the middle, and you, in order to get into this green zone, you need to have a 9% saturation of omega-3s in your blood. Let's just look at all the fats in your blood. If 9% are omega-3s, well guess what? This is an amazing statistic based on scientific research that if your omega-3 levels are greater than 9%, you have a 90% risk reduction rate for sudden cardiac death. Which, I mean, if you look at it that way, if you're over 40, you should be looking at your heart, your heart health, right? If you look at this and you get your score above 9%, you've now decreased your chance for sudden cardiac death by 90%. That's an amazing statistic by doing one thing, one simple thing. Uh, again, I recommend this to everyone, um, especially uh, cardiovascular based risk clients, but everyone in general to decrease those inflammation levels. I've done it myself and I do it once a year. Okay, so uh, retesting, which we'll talk about in a minute, you simply retest three to four months after you have it done initially to make sure that you've gotten those saturation levels back up. All right, so the next page gives you a lot more information. It actually breaks down EPA, DHA, total omega-3s, and the omega-3 index here. So now if you look at why this client had a lower, or I should say a worse, higher, arachidonic acid, which is the inflammatory omega-6s, to EPA, it's because they do pretty well on the DHA, which again is that um, omega-3 right above EPA, but they never make it down to this EPA that well. That can be enzymatic conversions, that can be a total lack of omega-3s in their diet, which it looks like with this particular client. And then if we look at the arachidonic acid again down here, their level is actually you know, right around average. So it simply means for this particular client who I know their nutrition plan, it's not from eating too poorly, it's actually from getting too few omega-3s in their diet. So what we did was, um, something they can only really figure out from a test like this, is we gave them a very specific and special omega-3. It's an omega-3 supplement that contains more EPA than DHA. Because you'll notice when you look at nutritional supplements, the average omega-3 naturally has more DHA than EPA. That's not a bad thing, it just means um, for this particular client, that could certainly work because it could make its way down to EPA, but for this um, particular client, again, what I was looking for was something more mood-based, more hormone-based, more anti-anxiety, more anti-inflammatory, which DHA also helps with as well, but to really saturate those levels. And so I gave them a product that has both DHA and EPA, but a higher dosage of EPA to really get those levels back up. So we're gonna retest this. Um, I, just based on all the other clinical research and other people that I've worked with, we're gonna see those levels get right back to basically perfection. Um, and even if they're a little high, that's a positive thing, that's a good thing. But if we wanted to, we could, certainly, we could simply tone down their dosage um, of omega-3s. Now the last page, which you may or may not ever use, um, they break down all the fats basically in your blood. They give you over 30 different readouts of everything like your saturated fats, um, palmitic um, acids, um, really going and digging deep. So if you're kind of like a, a research buff or someone who just loves to look into all of this information, this page right here will really kind of um, narrow down all of those specific things. So if you feel like your saturated fats are circulating through your body too well and they're not being removed, you'll certainly be able to see this on this particular blood test. So highly recommend it. It's called the Omega-3 um, blood test. I'm gonna link that up um, below, uh, below in the show notes themselves. And how is this test done? Very simply. In the mail, you simply receive a, a little card. That's all it is. And on this card, it comes with two lancets. You poke um, the top of your middle finger, that's how I prefer to do it, and you let the blood just touch down onto the card in these little circles. That's it, that's really it. You wait for the blood drops to dry and then you mail it into the lab. You get your results back in about three to four weeks. I actually personally read those results and we send them out to you with a customized um, 
dosage essentially of omega-3s based on your levels and based on the lab's research of what you would need to raise your levels up to the proper amount. Now from there, we might choose any one of all these different supplements that you can take. You can kind of see them. I'm gonna line them up right here. I think you're able to see all of this. And we have everything from kids omega-3s, we have the capsules right here from Integrative and Ortho Omega, which are both great. Um, this one allows for a little bit more EPA. This one's more overall great omega-3s. Both are excellent. And then we have um, a cod liver, cod liver oil, um, lemon flavored. This one actually tastes pretty good, believe it or not, it does. And it contains extra um, D, vitamin D, and of course it has the um, vitamin A as well. Great one to use during the winter. Uh, a product like this, and there are many, but I have to be very cautious in what I recommend for my nutritional supplements. I need to make sure that they have third-party testing, that there's no contaminants, no heavy metals, and that the dosage in here is exactly the dosage that should be in there, and also that it's based on research. So I have very stringent criteria, so there's not a lot that I do recommend, but these brands um, in particular I do. Um, Nordic Naturals, are, um, Orthomega, or I should say by Orthomega by Orthomolecular, Integrative Therapeutics. Um, so great brands. And then of course we have um, uh, another one for vegetarians. So we have an algae based one. Uh, you can use flax seeds, you can use chia seeds, which I kind of recommend anyways. But uh, as we know from the research, it doesn't convert as well to the DHA and EPA. So if you're really low and you're worried about cardiovascular disease, and you might be okay with using a fish oil um, potentially for a certain period of time, you can do that. And if you're a very um, devout vegan or vegetarian um, who does not eat fish, then I can understand that as well. And that's no problem. We're just gonna load you up on a little bit more omega-3s and certainly watch your omega-6 intake. So it's a lab um, that I feel very confident with. I've done hundreds of, uh, maybe over a thousand now, but hundreds of omega-3 tests. And uh, we do them um, double blind sometimes. We just send them in from myself or one person uh, the same exact day, the same exact time under different names to make sure we get the same exact results essentially that we're looking for and they have come back. I, that's my criteria that I use for every lab. There are so many labs I could use. Um, I like to use the ones that I know work. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cabral Concept. I'm gonna link up below um, some of my favorite omega-3 supplements. I know we usually use that for the Friday review. Um, maybe I'll get more into them on uh, Friday as well. Um, we also will link up the test where you can get the test. Uh, and then also uh, maybe some examples and case studies soon of me actually going through all the different numbers just a little bit more in depth if you care about that. But I'm telling you, it's an easy test to do, it's an easy test to read, and it's almost even simpler to actually implement because if you don't want to eat more fish, if you don't want to change your diet, all these particular types of things, all you do is add an omega-3 supplement once a day. Nothing could really be easier than that. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm Stephen Cabral, and I'll be back real soon with another episode of The Cabral Concept.